In addition to California being the origin, of being the first place to make cannabis illegal, we're also the site of the really the first marijuana reform movement. Uh, it started here in California, uh, actually with uh, an initiative back in 1972, the California Marijuana Initiative, the first ever initiative. We're honored to have some pioneers of that whole effort. Uh, we will talk now, we reminisce a little bit about the history of the marijuana reform movement, which has come to blossom so prosperously here. Um, to begin with, uh, we have actually Michael and Michelle Aldrich. Uh, they've been a couple as long as I've known them. Uh, Michael, uh, everybody may know as Dr. Dope. Uh, he wrote, uh, I guess, his dissertation on, uh, on drugs, marijuana myths, and folklore. Uh, and he was a founder of the first college chapter of the first organization to legalize marijuana, Limar, many years ago. Then he was a co-founder of Amorphia, and Amorphia uh, was the group that ran the 1972 California Marijuana Initiative. Michael, let's hear some reminiscences right. about the early days. Thank you, Ellen and Dale, for having a wonderful conference. I want to start by honoring the true pioneers who are W.B. O'Shaughnessy, next, who in 1839 published the first uh, article about medical cannabis use and also the first clinical trials of medical cannabis, next. And of course, Fitzhugh Ludlow, the author in 1857 of The Hashish Eater. Those are the true pioneers. Next. I also want to honor Park Davis and Company, which in, from the middle of the 19th century all the way through 1938, grew marijuana at a farm in uh, Rochester, Michigan, and had a, hang, uh, a drying shed just exactly like a modern drying shed. <laughs> that led them to produce uh, this type of tin, thank you very much, Dale, for this lovely tin. And Chris in the back says he has the whole series. Uh, this was uh, the way that they sold not only tinctures, but bulk marijuana in big tins like that. That would probably hold a pound or maybe even a kilo. 1879 is the date. Next. In uh, 1964, Lowell Eggemeyer. Uh, started the first Limar in the United States, in the world for that matter, by marching into a police station in San Francisco and announcing that marijuana should not be illegal and smoking a joint right in front of the uh, desk sergeant. Uh, that got him a small sentence. Uh, uh, Dale has actually talked to Lowell Geringer, I mean Lowell Eggermeyer, <laughs> I never have. Uh, in 1965, New York Limar started with uh, Allen Ginsberg carrying a sign around the women's prison called Pot is Fun. Next. Ed Sanders also uh, started New York Lemar in 65. In 66, John Sinclair started a Lemar in um, Ann Arbor and Detroit. And then in 67, based largely on John's, I started uh, Lemar in Buffalo. So here's a picture of me in India in 65, learning about a culture based on cannabis rather than alcohol. Next. Oh, I'm worshiping a lingam, by the way, in this picture. Um, in... Oh my God! <laughs> in uh, 1967, I started the uh, first college chapter of Limar, the first student organization for reform of drug laws. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, in recent times, it's turned into a huge national organization. Um, at the first conference on legalizing marijuana, which was in Buffalo in 69, I met Todd McCurea. Even at that time, he had this bottle with him, although this picture is taken later. Um, in 1971, uh, I had moved to California, and uh, Blair Newman and I started an organization called Amorphia. Amorphia sold Acapulco Gold next, Acapulco Gold Rolling Papers. Is that a wig you're wearing? Uh, no, that was actually my hair at the time. In Buffalo, it's interesting, I put on a necktie and cut my hair real short. 
But by the time I got to San Francisco, that was over. <laughs> so uh, here's the three founders of Amorphia, me, Blair Newman, and Frank Richards. The idea was to sell Acapulco Gold rolling papers and devote all proceeds to the legalization of marijuana. And once we'd accomplished that goal, uh, we would grow marijuana and devote all proceeds to further social change. It was a brilliant vision. And we're still enacting it. <laughs> Some of the first people I met in California were Mike Stepanian and uh, Terrence Hallinan. Uh, we used to have normal meetings at their office on 819 Eddy. And uh, Helen, or Stepanian had just published a book called Pot Shots. And in that he warned, don't do two crimes at the same time. Marijuana, the signal of misunderstanding. I testified before the National Commission in 1971, and if we had time, I have a lovely three-minute video of that. Uh, the National Commission came out for, for decriminalization in 72, as did, next, uh, Ed Brecker in the Consumers Union Report. Those two books were very influential on CMI activity. We sold Acapulco papers, next. Oh, by the way, those are the first hemp papers in the United States for probably 50 years. This was the Amorphia gang. We call this the tree picture. I won't go over everybody else except I'll point out uh, Gordon right here on the lower left and myself up above him. Some of the products we sold, go. Still have any left? There's one for auction tonight. Oh, good. This is the first Amorphia poster uh, by Becky Wilson, next. Leo Paoli in the upper left is the founder of CMI, a Foster City attorney who came to us in, in 19, late 1971 and wanted to do an initiative because none of the state government officials were going to do anything about marijuana. We went to Kaplan and his initiative wasn't any good, next. Uh, so we put our own wording on the ballot which said that no person in the state of California 18 years of age or older should be punished for all those crimes. Uh, notice that it's interesting that it tells the state what it cannot do rather than trying to set up a legalization system. It just simply says you can't outlaw this. Uh, don't cop out, register and vote. Richard, or Dave Sheridan poster, next. Uh, Bob Ashford, the leader of CMI, next. Uh, Dick Lake, I hope Dick is here. Is Dick here today? No, Richard Lake was one of our county coordinators. Next. That's the uh, CMI steering committee. Notice Gordon, Todd, and I are all in there. Next. This is Gordon circulating a petition to a wonderful little old lady. I love that picture of Gordon doing this. Clip. Harvey Mill uh, turned up at some point in the CMI process, walked into our office with this terrible New York Bronx accent, and volunteered to circulate petitions. This picture was taken later when he was doing the Briggs Initiative in 78. Gordon and I are uncertain as to when we actually met Harvey, but it was important to notice that the gay vote in San Francisco was the turning vote. It was the first time that political constituency had been revealed as the swing vote in this city. Todd and Michelle. I went to Washington in August of 72 for the first National Normal Conference. Met my lovely wife there. This beautiful girl came up to me and planted a kiss on my cheek and said, hi, I'm Michelle, and we've been together ever since. <laughs> uh, Andy Weil wrote us a lovely pamphlet. Keep going. OK, next one. That was the uh, uh, Proposition 19 poster that we reused a couple of years ago for Prop 19. Okay, I'm going to leave it here and give it to my lovely wife.